In this video, we look at using the definition of the derivative to come up with the derivative of a square root function, the most basic square root function, root x. And as I mentioned in a previous video, where we were doing the derivative of a rational function, you could also have asked this question by giving you the function and then just say find f prime, find f prime of x. Alright, so let's do that here. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And in our case, f of x plus h means wherever I see an x in my function, I'm just going to put an x plus h, so it's not going to be the square root of x, it's going to be the square root of x plus h. So, square root of x plus h is this expression here in our problem, square root of x plus h, minus f of x, and f of x is just the square root of x. And all that, of course, is divided by your h. <clears throat> so again, we can't plug in 0 for h, so we got to get it to cancel. Now, it seems tough to know what to do at this point to get that h to cancel, but there's really, I mean, really the issue is that our numerator has those square root expressions, and since that h is kind of trapped in, underneath that square root, we need a way to get it out. And the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to um, multiply with, by what's called the conjugate, so if you multiply by the conjugate of the top, so it's just a little review on what a conjugate is. The conjugate of uh, a minus b, the conjugate of a minus b is a plus b. The conjugate of the square root of x minus 1 is the square root of x plus 1. And when you multiply conjugates together, in particular when you have an expression that involves a square root, it has the effect of removing that square root. So, with that in mind, if we multiply the top by square root of x plus h plus square root of x, again, viewing this as like, this is like my a, and that is like my b, and then, of course, doing it to the bottom as well, because you can't just, you can't just multiply an expression because you'd be changing it. But if we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, then we're multiplying by 1. And so the reason this works out is because when you multiply these together, again, this is right, it's like a minus b times a plus b, then that equals Well, it has the effect of basically just lifting off those square roots. Okay, it equals that. Divided by h times... Now, I'm not going to distribute that h to get it entangled with, with this here. Okay, I'm just going to leave it. So it's h times that expression. I'm not going to distribute it because we want that h to go away eventually. So I'm going to leave it as is. Um, some of you might be, I think some of you might not understand why this is the result of this multiplication up here. If you're not sure, go over here, go to the side, and make yourself maybe a 2 by 2 box or something, where you do square root of x plus h minus square root of x, and then square root of x plus h plus square root of x. Multiply each box, add them all up, and I guarantee you'll get precisely what I've written there. So, I'll leave that to you. The top now becomes um, x minus x is 0, and then you're all only left with an h at the top, and h divided by h is a 1, so now I'm left with 1 over square root of x plus h plus square root of x. And at this point, we can plug in 0 for 
for h. And that turns this into 1 over square root of x plus 0 plus square root of x, and that's 1 over 2 square root of x. So the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x.